वेलकम विल स्टार्ट विद एन सी आर टी क्लास सेवन जोग्रफी चैप्टर फोर दैट इज एयर नाउ विल स्टार्ट विद द कंपोजिशन ऑफ एयर नाउ एज वी नो मोस्ट ऑफ द एटमोसफियर और द एयर कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स नाइट्रोजन देन यू हैव नाइट्रोजन फॉलोड बाय ऑक्सीजन वन परसेंट इज नियरली वॉटर वेपर देन यू हैव प्री डोमिनेटली आर्गन एज विच इज अनर्ट गैस एंड फाइनली यू हैव द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड now let's understand about the importance of these gases into the atmosphere uh, first is nitrogen nitrogen is important for survival many bacteria use nitrogen for uh, fixation so you have nitrogen fixation that occurs in the plant now next is oxygen oxygen is a by, uh, i could say a by product of the process of photosynthesis so under the photo process of photosynthesis plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen and this oxygen is released by the plants but used by human being so we inhale oxygen and this is important for survival or i could say respiratory activities now next comes the carbon dioxide what we exhale or we uh, remove out is carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide that we exhale is used by plants again for the process of photosynthesis to release free oxygen into the atmosphere so this is how you have carbon dioxide oxygen and nitrogen which are important constituents of atmosphere now again there are besides this there are other sources which release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere for example burning of fossil fuels now burning of fossil fuels release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere cutting of trees i could say deforestation affects increase in the carbon dioxide concentration because there would be decrease in the process of photosynthesis so all these processes lead to increase in the greenhouse gases so it increases the amount of a uh, heat that is trapped into the atmosphere and therefore these gases are known as greenhouse gases these greenhouse gases lead to increase in temperature of the globe and that is what is known as global warming the impact of global warming could be seen as rise in sea level this rise in sea level would increase in flooding activities would increase in coastal submergence so these are some of the consequences that would be faced because of global warming so this is how we understand the composition of atmosphere we have covered this um, all the topics that we would be covering for air today we have covered those elaborately in separate lectures so if you are interested to know more about each of these topics you can refer those links now next is structure of atmosphere now when we classify the structure of atmosphere we start with the lower most layer which is known as troposphere troposphere on an average the height is 13 km what is said it is the layer where you have the active weather phenomena that occur so you have cloud formations you have rainfall frog sorry fog hail so all those weather phenomena occur in the tropospheric layer this layer usually extends up to 20 km but the average height is considered at 13 km now next to troposphere comes the stratosphere stratosphere is the layer where you have most of the aeroplanes that fly as this line um, this belt is free of clouds so it's free of weather phenomena as i could say it extends up to 50 km and it is in this stratosphere that you have ozone layer ozone layer is o3 o oxygen is o2 and ozone is o3 now this ozone protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays that come onto the surface of the earth so you have ozone layer that is present into stratosphere next to stratosphere you have mesosphere mesosphere extends up to 80 km so extension of mesosphere lies up to 80 km and it is in this uh, mesosphere that you have most of the meteoroids that burn up next to mesosphere you have thermosphere as you can see this line denotes the temperature change and in thermosphere you have rapid increase in the temperature 
So you have rapid rise of temperature with height as seen in the case of thermosphere that is important. So you have temperature that varies from negative to nearly 60 degrees Celsius and that is a huge range of increase of temperature. <coughs> Again this thermosphere is known for uh, ionosphere belt. As a result you have maximum radio transmissions that occur in this belt. So you have radio transmissions that occur in thermosphere and beyond thermosphere you have exosphere. And that exosphere extends uh, to the outermost layers. It mainly includes the light gases like helium and hydrogen and uh, move up to the outside atmosphere. Now next is weather versus climate. Now what is the difference between weather and climate? It's an important question. Now if we try to understand the amount of sunlight that's received, we say only 1 in 2000 million parts, 20,000 million parts is received onto the earth. Now you have the phenomena one that occurs day to day or on an hour to hour basis and that phenomena is known as weather. So I can say the weather lo looks pleasant today, the weather is sunny today, it seems that the weather is uh, rainy today. So all these are statements that we denote regarding weather. So it's a kind of day to day, hour to hour changes in the uh, climatic, uh, the atmospheric conditions. The next comes the climate. On an average, we define climate as a change or an average that is taken for a duration of nearly 30 years. So what we consider for a duration of 30 years is defined as the climate. So based on that, we can say the climatic conditions of the deserts of Rajasthan is arid. That means we have taken the average over a period of 30 years and based on that, we have decided or we have come to a conclusion that these are the arid parts on the globe, these are the parts which are uh, kind of uh, parts with uh, uh, regions with heavy rainfall and so on and so forth. So climate is a kind of average for nearly more than 30 years which is taken into consideration. Now there are various instruments which we use to understand the atmospheric phenomena. To measure temperature we use thermometer. Now thermometer can be either in degree Celsius, degree Fahrenheit, Kelvin or Rankin. So these are the commonly used scales for temperature. Then you have barometer by means of which we measure the pressure, uh, the atmospheric pressure. So you have android barometers and uh, the other barometers. Then you have rain gauge that measures the amount of rainfall. So you have a beaker with the amount of water being filled and you decide how much rainfall occurred last night or so on and so forth. Then you have wind vane which gives you the direction of the wind. So it rotates, it moves based on the wind direction. So that is known as wind vane. So these are the four major instruments that we must know or we must be familiar with when we talk about atmosphere. Now next is temperature. Temperature is a kind of interesting concept that we must understand in atmosphere because uh, in simple terms, if I try to explain what is temperature, I can say it's a degree of hotness or coldness of a body or the uh, when we talk about atmosphere, I can say of a mass of air. So the amount of hotness or coldness or the degree of hotness or coldness of an air parcel would be known as temperature. Now this temperature can change from day to night, from hour to hour, from one season to another season. So I can say summers would be the warmest of all, winters would be the coldest of all. So there would be a kind of temperature change that occurred during different sections. Now what rays come onto the earth from the sun? So the rays falling from the sun onto the earth are known as the incoming solar radiation. Since they are coming from sun, they are known as solar. So incoming solar radiations could be abbreviated as insolation. Okay, so you have insulation as the word which is used to describe the incoming solar radiations. Now what happens to the temperature? Temperature decreases as we move from equator to pole. So you have a globe here. This is the equatorial line and this is the polar region. 
so as we move towards the pole you might have heard of igloos you might have heard of uh, uh, penguins being located uh, in the regions of arctic and antarctic so why is that that is because you have a fall in temperature as you move from equator to poles you have decrease in temperature again the urban areas are said to have kind of high temperature this is because of the cemented road you have the asphalt that is used in uh, making the road the concrete the cement of the buildings all this trap the heat as a result they lead to formation of uh, a zone which is known as urban heat island so you have formation of urban heat island that occurs in the urban areas and that is mainly because of higher temperature that is seen in the cities now when we talk about the unit for measuring temperature as i said you have degree celsius kelvin and rankin are the standard unit standard units of which most commonly used is celsius celsius ranges from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius 100 degree is the boiling temperature and 0 degree is the freezing temperature now this unit was given by anders celsius and hence it is widely accepted as celsius now next is pressure now the concept of pressure is interesting what happens when you are standing in a in a open space you have when i am standing here i have pressure being exerted onto me from all sides by air now obviously this pressure is not visible to me but we can understand this pressure changes as we go to moon or as we go below the surface or into the ocean i would say now what happens on the moon there is no air as a result what would happen the inside uh, blood pressure is there but there is no pressure to equalize the internal pressure as a result you would have your arteries to burst out and there would be bursting of arteries and that would lead to bleeding so bleeding of arteries is common as you move to regions where there is no air for example space so artificially what is done you have a space suit that is created and that space suit is filled with air to compensate the uh, internal pressure you have the space suit that is filled with air now this is what we have talked about as we go to the moon now i have an interesting question for you what would happen if you go deep uh, deep beneath the ocean there would be definitely some change it's up to you to find out and we'll be putting that as note below the video uh, so you can refer that once you have a kind of mental picture about that now moving on to pressure when i define pressure i can say it's the weight exerted uh, it's exerted as a weight of the air on the earth surface as i move up the pressure decreases so i can say maximum pressure occurs at the sea level so at the sea level you have the highest pressure and as i go up you have decrease in the pressure now this was the vertical distribution of pressure there is another distribution which is known as the horizontal distribution of pressure when i talk about horizontal distribution of pressure it's important to understand the concept of air movement so let's say i have a air mass here now this air mass is heated so what i am providing to this is heat as this air mass is heated it would rise when it is rising it would also expand so that means this air mass would have high temperature and since it has a high temperature it would have less pressure so this would be the air mass with low pressure and this low pressure air mass would be kind of uh, region which is more cloudy which is more wet and which is more disturbed as compared to a low temperature so once this rises and expands what would happen is it would there would be formation of clouds that would take place that we would see in the next lecture uh, in the next slide so you have a kind of low temperature that comes into phase and this low temperature occurs where you have subsidence so you have air that shrinks that cools and that settles down so you have 
cold air mass that moves down it's heavy so it would be dense and it would sink to the surface and this sinking or low temperature would lead to creation of high pressure and this zone of high pressure would be the region with clear and sunny skies so in specific terms if i try to explain air movement occurs from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure since you have a movement of air towards the region of low pressure this region would definitely be unstable so it would be more cloudy more foggy uh, more of wet skies would be seen however since air is moving out from the region of high pressure this region would be the region of clear and sunny skies now <coughs> when i talk about winds that is again an interesting concept now what are winds wind is a movement of air as i said from high pressure to low pressure so that is what is i classify as wind now winds can either be gentle in nature or strong now gentle winds would be like of ka uh, ka ki kind of calm weather phenomena that would be brought but strong winds would lead to stormy conditions it would also lead to uh, kind of uh, uh, storm uh, strong winds would also be seen in the phenomena associated with tsunamis or uh, uh, kind of cyclonic conditions so all those would be strong winds now when we classify winds we can classify three basic categories of winds you have the permanent winds the seasonal winds and the local winds now let's understand these one by one so the first is the permanent wind the second is the seasonal wind and lastly you have the local winds now let's talk about the easiest one first that's the local wind so i can say the hot wind that blow uh, in the summer months in the regions of Raj uh, rajasthan or dry arid areas in india is known as loo so that's a kind of local wind again i can say land breeze and sea breeze is an example of local wind so what happens during the night during the night land cools faster as compared to water so water warms up and moves up and there is circulation of uh, breeze that occurs from land to sea and back to land and that is known as land breeze during the night time however during the day time or during the afternoon what happens the land warms up at a much faster pace as a result you have moving uh, this warm air moves up as i said so you have hot air that moves up and you have a kind of circulation that occurs and since this circulation is coming from oceans it is known as sea breeze and this sea breeze occurs during the day time and you have uh, land breeze that occurs during the night time so this was a simple local wind now let's talk about the seasonal winds when i say seasonal winds it's due to the changes in the direction of the wind and this changes of the direction of wind are clearly explained under monsoon phenomena in india so you have a kind of reversal of wind that takes place we'll cover this more we have already covered that in the video on monsoon we'll cover this on more ncert chapters as we move forward now the most important of these is the permanent winds permanent winds are those winds which flow into a particular direction throughout the year so throughout the year they would have the same direction so you can look at to the globe uh, picture here so you have the region of low pressure high pressure low pressure and high pressure so our globe is automatically divided into belts of low pressure and high pressure alternately and you have movement of wind as i said from high pressure to low pressure so the direction would be this so it would be always from high pressure to low pressure now there would be rotation of the wind that is explained by coriolis force which we have already covered into a separate video uh, if you are interested into more details you can refer that but definitely it's not required for a standard of 7 now understanding the concept of three basic winds you have the region that blow uh, the wind that blows into the tropical region is known as the trade winds next to the trade winds you have the westerlies and towards the pole the winds that blows from pole are known as the easterlies now these trade winds westerlies and easterlies are the permanent winds 
and they move in a particular direction throughout the year. So that is why they are known as permanent winds. So this explains the concept of wind. Now moving on to the next concept that is moisture and precipitation. What happens? As I said, you have an air mass that heats up. From the land when the air mass is being heated up, it becomes hot and it rises. When it rises, it leads to a saturation point and there is condensation that occurs and that condensation leads to formation of clouds. Now these clouds pour down as rainfall. So you have the process of rainfall that occurs. Now <clears throat> the process of rainfall occurs but what is moisture? When I say moisture, I can say it's the amount of uh, uh, water that is present into the air parcel. If the air is fully laden with moisture, we call it a kind of humid day. So a humid day would be a day where you have an air parcel which includes a lot of moisture. Now there are three types of rainfall that are commonly explained. The first is the cyclonic rainfall that occurs due to the formation of cyclone or depression that occurs and that is known as cyclonic rainfall. The next is the relief rainfall, we also call it orographic rainfall. So as you have the uh, moisture laden clouds that move, they reach a saturation point and they strike with the mountain surface mountain surface and they pour down as rainfall. The region where they cause rainfall is known as the windward side and the region which is left uh, comparatively on a drier end is known as the leeward side. So it generally occurs when you have a set of a cloud that hits a mountain area. So that is known as relief or orographic rainfall and finally you have the conventional rainfall. Conventional rainfall is a normal process of rainfall, the heating formation of cloud and then warm air rises up, you have formation of cloud, you have saturation that comes into place and finally you have uh, downpour. So that is what is known as the conventional rainfall. Now when we talk about cyclonic rainfall, cyclonic rainfall could be of two types. You can have tropical cyclonic rainfall and temperate cyclonic rainfall. We will understand this later as we move forward with higher classes. For now, to understand the concept of tropical rainfall and temperate rain, uh, rainfall, in simple terms I can say temperate cyclonic rainfall occurs due to front formation. So when you have the warm front and the cold front that merge, you have the formation of occluded front and that leads to temperate cyclonic conditions. However, tropical cyclonic condition I would say is a uh, kind of huge expansion of the conventional rainfall system where you have a kind of cyclonic depression that is formed and the downpour that occurs. So this is how we understand the concept of moisture. With this we cover chapter 4 of NCRT. We will be covering chapter 5 that is water in the next class. You can subscribe to our channel for more details and updates. Have a good day ahead.